Hello, I'm Jeff Ramsire, and I'm here to talk to you today about SpeedX, which is a scalable, parallelizable, and economically efficient distributed asset exchange. I'm a graduate student at Stanford University, advised by professors uh, David Mazieres and Ashish Goel, studying, and I've been studying how to design computer systems from the ground up that build in scalability and efficiency. And I've also been working part time at Stellar. So for this talk, first I'll talk about existing on-chain asset exchanges and existing DEXs and what we might want out of them in an ideal world. Then I'll talk about SpeedX and talk about how SpeedX uh, by design meets, the, meets our criteria for what we want out of an ideal DEX. And finally, I'll talk about SpeedX uh, and how it could integrate into Stellar and why these two could combine to um, power the future of cross-border uh, digital asset payments. So, what is a DEX and what do we want out of an ideal DEX? Well, a DEX is a crucial uh, uh, component for any kind of uh, cross-border payment system. In particular, if I wanna move money from country A to country B, I need to be able to, to easily and quickly change the money of country A into the currency of country B. And uh, this DEX, a, a DEX provides an easy uh, open system for making those kinds of transactions. But, in order to be effectively usable, our DEX needs to be liquid. That is to say, if I'm moving a small amount of money from one currency to another, the, um, my trade shouldn't uh, move the market price uh, too much on its own. The DEX should also be fair. We're building a, a global piece of infrastructure. It should give everyone around the world an approximately equal level of access. Uh, we're also, um, the DEX should be low cost and scalable. You know, in particular, if we're building a, a global piece of infrastructure, it should be able to handle transactions from a large fraction of the world's uh, population all at once. And in particular, this uh, every transaction should get charged a fee that is as low as possible. And finally, the DEX should be decentralized. Um, it should run on chain and should not have to rely on some third party um, centralized uh, component. Unfortunately, existing DEXs do not meet these criteria. Um, if you use Stellar, if you if you use Stellar, I'm sure you're familiar with um, uh, the problem of, of uh, path payments and uh, internal arbitrage. Um, but in general, any kind of on-chain DEX that we see today fragments liquidity between asset pairs, and this means that in order to get the best exchange rate from one asset to another, I have to explore a, a complicated set of paths um, to to make a trade from uh, one asset to another, and each path is going to get me a different exchange rate. And after I make a trade. Um, I introduced an arbitrage opportunity between the path that I chose and every other path um, uh, uh, from where I'm, from what I bought, from what I sold to what I bought. Um, great. Uh, existing DEXs also allow um, risk-free front running. So in particular, if I offer to buy something for say at most $10, somebody else with a high speed internet connection and high speed connection to a blockchain producer can see my incoming trade and offer and um, buy what I want to buy at the market price of say $9 and then immediately sell it back to me at my limit price of $10. What this means for the DEX is that users get worse exchange rates and the overall network traffic on the DEX is artificially increased, which increases the operating costs of actually running this, uh, this DEX. Finally, um, existing DEXs um, all have some kind of uh, built-in maximum uh, transaction throughput limit that is ultimately um, comes down to the speed of the hardware on which the blockchain runs. Um, this means that uh, maybe some blockchain doesn't have to charge high fees now, but in the future, if transaction volume doubles or triples or increases by a factor of 10X, eventually um, the blockchain will run into some hardware defined uh, throughput limit and have to raise, start raising fees in order to limit the transactions that can come onto the network. Um, what this means is that eventually, if this DEX is to be a truly global piece of infrastructure, um, it'll run into this limit and charge high fees to users and uh, be unable to satisfy tr trade requests from many users around the world. So uh, instead, can we build a DEX that avoids these problems? In particular, can we build a DEX that gives everyone an equal level of, of access around the world, no matter your latency to, the, um, to a block producer and no matter the capital that you have? Can we build a DEX that makes an optimal use of the liquidity that is available um, in the trading pairs on its network? Can we give everyone who trades on the uh, DEX a fair exchange rate? Can we eliminate uh, risk, this kind of risk-free front-running attack that we see all too often on um, many existing chains and is probably being deployed or will be deployed soon on Stellar? 
Can we build a, a DEX that cuts down on internal arbitrage transactions that uh, cause uh, extra network overflow overhead and uh, reduce the exchange rates that users see? Can we build a DEX that charges every user uh, fees that are as close to zero as possible? Um, and can finally, um, no matter how much um, transaction throughput on the DEX increases. And finally, can we build a DEX that runs entirely on chain while meeting all of these properties? Well, you're in this talk and the answer is yes. Um, and that design is SpeedX. Uh, SpeedX is a de design for a DEX that is based on trading large um, numbers of trades in batches. In particular, we're running this in a blockchain. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll process trades like block by block. Um, every block will contain some number of transactions that I'll um, create SpeedX requests to trade. And um, all of the trade requests that, will, are, that are created in one block will be considered one batch for SpeedX. Now, how does this work? Well, SpeedX constructs what we'll call a virtual market maker. Uh, and this virtual market maker sets a consistent set of, of uh, asset prices and asset exchange rates. Um, and limit orders traded with this virtual market maker and not with each other. I want to emphasize this because this is different from how many existing markets work. Uh, SpeedX does not actually match uh, limit orders with each other. All trades go through this logical virtual um, intermediary. So how does this work? Well, again, some consensus process, um, you know, like Stellar, will come up with a batch of trades and then the virtual market maker looks at the uh, trades in a batch and comes up with a set of exchange rates between every pair of assets. Um, and then every offer can look at the market maker's uh, posted exchange rates um, and offer and uh, and choose whether to trade with the market maker based on whether the market maker's exchange rate is uh, higher than the market's and the offer's uh, limit sell price. Then they transfer assets. Um, the the block closes and we move on to the next block. Now, how does the market maker set the, value, the exchange rates, well, first it sets what it calls asset valuations. So um, for example, we might have the market maker set that the value of $1 is equal to 100 units and the value of a euro is equal to 100, uh, 120 units. What this means is that um, effectively the market maker says that uh, $1 has the same abstract value as uh, 1.2, uh, sorry, one euro has the same abstract value as $1.2. Um, and this means that uh, 10 euros can be traded with a market maker for $12 and vice versa. So it turns out that what we'll call market clearing valuations are unique. Now, what does this mean? Well, first we'll say that a set of valuations from the market maker clears the market if we can go through this whole process and uh, the total amount of every asset that is sold to the market maker equals the amount that is bought from the market maker. In other words, um, after we do this whole process, um, if the market maker picked the right valuations, then it'll have no, uh, no profit or loss. Now, it's important that these uh, valuations are unique because now, because of the uniqueness, the market maker um, need not make any strategic decisions when it is um, computing the valuations. Uh, the actual algorithm to run the, the market maker is just really, um, computing some underlying mathematical property about the batch. Um, so the core technical challenge then is how to run that uh, computation uh, efficiently and quickly. It turns out that this computation act can actually run entirely on chain. Um, in, in, for context, in a blockchain like Stellar, uh, where blocks are produced roughly every five seconds, uh, we need an algorithm for this computation that um, maybe runs in uh, reliably in under one second or reliably in under half a second. Turns out this is possible to do. I'll leave the details for a blog post that will soon be up on the uh, SDF blog um, to give a technical deep dive into this. Um, but at a high level, the algorithms started a uh, some candidate set of prices and then iteratively refine these prices until they get very close to market clearing. And then we'll round out the uh, approximation error there um, with a small linear program. So uh, how, does this, um, how does this design meet our earlier criteria? Uh, and enable an efficient future for cross-border payments. Well, first, this design automatically gives optimal liquidity between uh, illiquid asset pairs. Um, in other words, asset pairs that are not traded directly. Because we're trading with the market maker, um, in effect, the, the liquidity between any two asset pairs 
um, is automatically as good as the liquidity of the best path payment um, between those two asset pairs, between those two assets. Um, uh, concretely, if you're trading on SpeedX, you don't need to um, compute any kind of path payment. You can just trade directly. SpeedX eliminates risk-free front running. Um, in particular, if I try, if I seek an incoming trade and I try and buy what that trade wants to buy and immediately resell it to the trade, well, I, I can do this, but I will make no profit or loss um, because what I, the exchange rate when I sell it will be equal to the exchange rate when I buy it. SpeedX also cuts down on uh, residual arbitrage opportunities uh, and, and in particular leaves no arbitrage opportunities behind on the DEX after it, its operation. Um, SpeedX also gives everyone around the world an equal level of access. Because we're processing trades in batches instead of one by one, as long as I can get my trade to a block producer before ledger close time, I'll see the same exchange rates as everybody else in that block. So now, um, of course, if my internet connection's latency is uh, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, then yes, I'm gonna be running behind. But if my internet connection uh, latency is um, a few hundred milliseconds, I'll get the same latency. I'll get the same exchange rates and level of access as somebody with a, a sub millisecond um, internet connection um, to a, a block producer. Now, because SpeedX runs entirely on chain, it maintains the same level of decentralization as, um, as uh, the existing blockchains like Stellar. And finally, I haven't talked about this yet, but because every block, every trade in a batch um, trades at the same set of exchange rates, um, then in fact, the, all of the computational work to operate SpeedX is entirely parallelizable. What that means is that if, um, if we want SpeedX to handle uh, twice as many transactions per second, we can give SpeedX twice as many um, CPU resources and SpeedX will run twice as fast. If we wanted to um, handle 10X the, um, the um, total number of transactions per second, well, all we have to do is just buy a lot more CPUs and give them to SpeedX. Um, and because of this parallelism, it can effectively um, use all these CPUs and scale um, to support the higher uh, transaction throughput rate. So that's SpeedX. How does it fit into Stellar and why are SpeedX and Stellar a natural match for each other? Well, first, they both have a shared mission of empowering a future of, of cross-border uh, payments that is both scalable and low cost. Um, and finally, and, and SpeedX also fits particularly well into the Stellar Core's protocol. Um, SpeedX, I, I mentioned that the price computation algorithm is effective to run on chain. Um, that's on chain when it's implemented directly in the software underlying the, um, the blockchain node. Um, the computation would be far too expensive to implement as a, uh, uh, naively, naively as a smart contract. And moreover, any kind of parallelism uh, requires a uh, substantially reworking the, um, the core protocol to support that parallelism from the ground up. So. Uh, how can we build this into Stellar? There's there's three things, three main things we'd have to change um, to build SpeedX into Stellar. Uh, first would be to execute um, transactions in a in multi-phase setup. So for one ledger, first you, you might um, implement the, the Stellar transactions that uh, interact with SpeedX. Um, and these, again, could be parallelized um, in a, like a restricted um, transaction model. Um, these would create a batch of trades for SpeedX, which we would then run. Um, again, in a parallelizable manner. And then we would run the rest of the uh, regular Stellar transactions um, in the ledger um, using the regular existing Stellar transactions with no modifications. Um, to make this, um, this first, uh, this first um, phase of the transaction execution step work, we need a stronger set of transaction uh, set validity conditions, um, primarily to block double spends or attempt to sell the same going twice in one SpeedX batch. These essentially generalize the existing uh, fee preconditions that Stellar Core already checks. Uh, and finally, to use SpeedX, the, um, every asset that's uh, traded on SpeedX would need to have its total, um, the total amount issued on the platform limited to in 64 max. Um, this is just to prevent uh, integer overflows inside of SpeedX. And finally, I'll mention that SpeedX is open source. Um, you can check out the documentation online. Um, we have a, a standalone SpeedX implementation uh, developed at Stanford. 
uh, to test the scalability of SpeedX. And I also have a prototype of how SpeedX could integrate with Stellar Core uh, available on my GitHub. Thank you very much. I'll be hanging out in the comment section afterwards to answer questions.